Love and Money Secrets TV. I am your host, Dame Lillian Walker, and I am absolutely excited and delighted. We are on chapter 10 already. So if you've been following along since chapter one, if you continue the course, you will be happy to say that you've completed the entire reading of the book in 15 days. So we're getting started right away. We're going to jump in and dive in deep. Chapter 10 is titled Case Studies Making It Real. In the case studies that follow, you'll be introduced to people just like you who took time out of their busy lives to create a new future. Every day, they define themselves by a vision of this future instead of by the memories of their past. So you could say they were more in love with their future than they were with their past. The act of doing the work daily and turning the practices in the last three chapters into a skill led them to become more supernatural. So pay attention to how simple they made it. Tim gets the key to his future. So at an events workshop in Seattle, which typically coincides with Halloween, we asked our students to dress up as their future selves on the very first night. So Tim dressed up as a supernatural swami. He'd always wanted to be a swami and he, just, he subscribed to the lifestyle and at a young age had left his hometown in Connecticut to study in an ashram. At the start of the event, participants also received a gift from our company, a key to symbolizing, unlocking the potential of each participant's future self. So Tim had attended several advanced level workshops in the past. The first time he made a mind movie, he inserted a picture of gold silver coins in one of his scenes. For years, he had been trying to surrender the emotion of fear, but at a certain point, he realized that behind the fear was unworthiness. So for Tim, the coins were a symbol of worthiness. Everybody wants wealth, he told me, but because I was on the spiritual path into yoga and everything that goes with it, I had a mentality that I had to be poor to truly walk the talk. So instead of gold and silver coins, merely representing wealth, they represented being worthy to receive. So for Tim's Seattle Mind Movie, he added more images to evolve his vision. As another symbol for worthiness, Tim used a Chinese character that meant wealth. But because he never desired money, below the symbol he placed the word affluence. He preferred affluence because when he looked up the word's definition, he found that its Latin root meant to flow forward. Wouldn't it be great, he thought, if everything I wanted flowed towards me? Although Tim is very analytical, after continuously watching his mind movie in tandem with the kaleidoscope, he found he could quickly bypass the analytical mind and get into the subconscious mind the operating system to the program of his future. So during the workshop, when it came time to dimensionalize a scene in his mind movie, he had a profound experience. He started to feel joy and then a wildly enthusiastic love for life, almost like a burning sensation in his heart. And he said he felt as if he could set the world afire. Then during the meditation, I told the students it was time to open up and then to receive. And that's when Tim's energy began to enter his body. So I don't know where it came from, he told me, but it was like someone had turned on a spigot. I shot straight up. The energy came in through the top of my head and then moved out through my hands. My palms were face down. Yet without conscious control, the energy caused them to lift and turn over. I lost track of time and space, and I had no idea where I was. But for the rest of the meditation, I was in an ecstatic, exalted state. I knew somehow everything was going to be different. 
and that I was no longer the same person. So when the energy downloaded into Tim, he believed it was carrying a message of worthiness because he was never the same afterward. I am convinced that the new information that came into my body rewrote my DNA, erasing the old self, because that part of my personality is now gone, he says. So when Tim got home to Phoenix, where he owned and operated a futon shop, he returned to business as usual on Monday morning. On Thursday, a woman who had purchased a futon from him several years before came into his shop, and since the day she purchased the futon, they had formed a friendship, and every few weeks, she would stop by just to chat. She was now retired and came into the shop to tell Tim she had just finished making out her will. She wanted Tim to be her first executor. Tim felt honored and he thanked her. Here it is, she said, placing it on the counter along with a key. Read it. Tim began scanning the document to discover that not only was he the executor, but she was also bequeathing him 110,000 worth of silver and gold coins. The key she placed on the counter was the key to her safe deposit box where she kept the coins, which of course matched the picture in Tim's mind movie. So in an instant, Tim remembered similar key to his future that he had received at the advanced workshop in Seattle. Now that's being worth it. Sarah can't touch the ground. So on Labor Day 2016, Sarah severely injured her back attempting to prevent a five-ton boat from crashing into a dock for seven weeks. She was in agony as she endured physical therapy, took a cocktail of medications, and made countless visits to the chiropractor. I'm gonna pause right here because, oh, it kind of brings flashbacks to me. Um, you know, she severely injured her back attempting to prevent a five-ton boat from crashing into a dock. Gosh, that sounds miserable. You know, I remember when I was hit by an Orange County an Orange County Transit Authority bus. I had no idea where this bus came from because I looked left, there was nothing. Right, there was nothing. I went to go, I usually go left, right, left. I never got to complete the left because out of nowhere, the next thing I knew I was flying. And so to say that's a miserable experience, it was shocking, it was, it was confusing because I had no idea what had hit me. And so as I was flying, I was seeing this now from the periphery of my eyesight, I could now see this bus coming by and then I was then freaking out going, oh my gosh, trying to pull my legs, my feet up because I could see that my feet were between the bike and the curb and I didn't want my feet to get crushed. So then I'm pulling up my feet, but I'm also, you know, moving forward. This happened in a split second, but it kind of feels like you're in like warp speed as it's happening. So yeah, after that, of course you're in pain, you're in agony, you're in, you're in misery because you're in pain all over your body. You know, in my case, I injured my neck, I injured my back. I um, you know, had a laceration on my leg and I had stitches and um, I was all discombobulated. And it takes a long time to heal from something like that. In fact, I'm, not, I'm still not done healing from that. I'm monumentally better thank goodness to the teachings that I, I learned with Dr. Joe. And I also had some Tai Chi, medical Tai Chi and Qigong that I incorporated and chiropractic health and some other modalities that I implemented. But really the coup de grace for me and many levels was, you know, it has been Dr. Joe's work. And that's why I'm so passionately um, diving deep and studying and have become an advanced student and, and a practitioner, as well as a protege of Dr. Joe's, Dr. Joe's and Dr. David's, who I mention frequently. And I love giving people these neuro health resets so that they can relieve themselves of pain. You know, why not subject yourself to up to three minutes of wiring and linking and syncing both your left and your right hemisphere of the brain if it just takes three minutes and it doesn't take any beliefs. And so that's one of the common denominators you're gonna see here throughout the different case studies here is that 
everyone has endured some sort of level of emotional, spiritual, and physical pain that has brought them, in many cases, it's brought us to our knees, and um, you have to heal. And conventional medicine hasn't been able to, in the traditional form, hasn't been able to help. And so that's why we seek out to improve and knock on wood. It works, it works, it works big time and it works for a lot of different things, especially these meditative mystical teachings and practices. They work if you work them. And just like the neural health research is not contingent upon belief, the meditations aren't contingent upon belief either. What people struggle with is their distinguishing. They think that their ego thoughts, they think that the brain use of the mind and it's recalling the emotions of the emotions that are lodged as a record of experiences in our body that come up as pain and as emotions, we tend to think that that is us and that is not us. We are not separate from love, but we seem to think that we are that and not our true self, which is pure, unconditional love that would never think an unloving thought towards ourselves or towards someone else. So think about it. If you, if you have been habitually thinking unloving thoughts of other people, well, let's backtrack. If you've been thinking unbeknownst to yourself, you've been thinking unloving thoughts towards yourself because you believe your ego and you believe your brain and you believe your emotional pain, quite literally your pain body because it's, this is a storage cabinet of all your past feelings, thoughts, and emotions and your brain is recalling that so that your body is now betraying you with shaky legs at times where you don't think you're nervous but apparently your body thinks you're nervous or is giving you a panic attack or an anxiety attack or disorder or nervousness or, or chronic worry, chronic hurry, chronic anger, chronic rage. None of that is really you, but you think it's you. So if you're treating your own self that way, how could you possibly treat somebody else with grace? How could you possibly treat somebody else with compassion? How could you possibly treat somebody else with real, pure, unconditional love? You can't. You're beating yourself up 24 seven. And hurting people hurt people. The clues are right there. Okay, let's keep moving on. Let's find out what happens next. So for seven weeks, she was in agony as she endured physical therapy, took a cocktail of medications, and made countless visits to the chiropractor. So after nothing else helped her, her doctor scheduled Sarah for surgery. And But first, she decided to attend an advanced workshop in Cancun, one of my favorite places. If you haven't been there, you've got to go out of this world of water, crystalline blue. It's the most exquisite thing I've ever seen in my life. And I've been to a lot of places around the world where there's incredibly blue waters, but it just, when I went, it blew me away that I'm like, oh my gosh, I never had an affinity for Cancun. If Dr. Joe hadn't had his monastery there, I would have never been to Cancun. And now I'm definitely going back. Can't wait for this quarantine to be lifted so that I can go back because I know he's, he's setting up, um, he's having another uh, advanced event for his advanced students. So my friends and I were already talking about it. So anywho, so because of how much pain Sarah was in, her son suggested she bring a wheelchair. So she decided not to. And when she arrived at the hotel, she collapsed on the floor in absolute pain. So later, when she got into the pool on a float, she had severe spasms when she attempted to get out. Sarah was not new to my work, so she came to Cancun with her meditation cushion and her mind movie. In her mind movie, she was healthy, strong, and able to run again. She could play basketball with her son and lacrosse with her daughter. Every time Sarah saw herself in the scene performing aerial yoga, she embraced the joy she knew she would feel if she could actually do it. And when she heard the song from her mind movie, her energy rose. I wanna 
pause right here because there's a couple things about what she's doing, what I'm doing and what I have done. And that my friends who are all fellow mystics, we are all practitioners of this work. And now you are too. And using the mind movies. And if you don't have a mind movie, in fact, I'm going to play Happy Faces video of Cancun from when I went so that you can start to visualize yourself in a happy, high energy, that whole video. Uh, in fact, one of my friends, he sent me that video and he said that it, it choked him up to watch the video because it evoked such an emotional response. It was a flashback going back to when we were in Cancun. And then some of my other friends chimed in because he sent the video to them as well. And, and so now it started this discussion about it. And then as we all watched it, we all got, we were choked up with the emotion of love and of joy and reflecting back about what a wonderful experience that was. And so now as a result of that particular mind movie, called the happy faces video because there's a lot of happy faces in that video you'll see and it's a short uh, short video but one of the things that came from that today which is like what a wonderful co-creation we all created is we have decided that we are going to go meet in Cancun this fall sometime between fall and winter we're going to go back and we are going to have a reunion and we're gonna to get together, we're gonna to meditate, we're going to have good times together. Every night we would have dinner together. And I was the one who, um, I kind of self-designated myself because I wanted people to come together and to get to know each other. Because I knew that a lot of people didn't know anybody there, just like I didn't know anybody there. And people don't like to eat alone. So I said, well, let me initiate it. I'm gonna invite 10 to 15 people. Whoever says yes, great. If only one other person shows up, great. If no one shows up, that's fine. Because the alternative is I would be having dinner by myself. As luck would have it, we ended up having, you know, 10 to 15 people every single night. So it was fantastic. All that to say that if you create your own mind movie, whether you choose to go to mindmovie.com, but whether you decide to get a, a mind movie account yourself. But let's say you don't want to do that. Let's make this as easy peasy as possible. If you have a Mac computer, you can go on iMovies and based on the pictures that you have in your computer and videos that you've taken of fun things that you've done, you can create your own iMovie and that can be your mind movie. Pick song, a song that inspires you. My mind movie has a couple songs and one of my songs is a song by Sia which just gets me like revved up and happy and excited because the song is called Unstoppable and she, I love her voice, she belts out a song, she just has this awesome bravado and vibrato when she sings. It's an energizing song. She's empowered because she's unstoppable. That's my theme song. And then the second song is the breakup song, which is not what you think. So you'll have to check that out. I think I discussed that in chapter two or chapter three. I'm trying to remember if it, if it was actually during the still live part of the live stream or if we had already gotten off the broadcast and Victoria and I, another healer, if we had already gotten off the live stream and we were just talking on the Zoom, her and I. And if not, I will put the lyrics to that. Um, maybe I'll do a, uh, a little video that just shares the lyrics with you so that you can hear the powerful message. That song, the breakup song, has to do with your self-mastery. If anything, this work this is the answer to all of your prayers. This is the answer to anything and everything your heart has ever desired. This is the answer to, I don't care if it's physical problems, um, you wanna lose weight, you need to gain weight, uh, you have anorexia, you have bulimia, you have diabetes, you have um, multiple sclerosis, you have multiple dystrophy, you have multigravita, you have a mystery uh, disease, you have lack of resources, lack of money, you want more money, you want a better job, you want a better business, you want additional sources of income, you want um, your emotional state to be completely resolved, healthy and in balance and in synergy, you want a spiritual connection to the divine creator. I'm telling you, this is it. Because once you are connected to the divine, to the creator, to God, to the almighty, to the universe, to the great architect, to whatever 
I don't care what you want to call it. Dios, um, Allah, uh, the light, the great I am. We could get, you know, Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah, El Shaddai. I mean, could go, I mean there's 72 names of, of God just, just in Kabbalah and in uh, the Jewish tradition. We have 72 names for God. So we're not going to go through all the different names. But you know what? It's all, it's that energy. It's in the quantum. That's where we need it. It's that brilliant intelligence. And everything is created. And so all you have to do is to become one with that energy. Get into the 5D space. Space, slow down your heart rate, slow down your breath, slow down your brain waves, so that you can become one with it. And now, just by having your focused attention on it, you start to create the particles. And then as you add the fuel to the fire, which is your elevated emotion of love with an open heart, broadcasting love, and then you add gratitude and appreciation, which is the ultimate state of receivership, that's when your order is in. That's when you finish putting the command in. That's like saying enter on your computer. You hit a command, enter. When you hit enter, it's done. So, in her mind movie, she was healthy, strong, and able to run again. She could play basketball with her son and lacrosse with her daughter. Every time, Sarah saw herself in the scene performing aerial yoga. Boy, that sounds like a lot of fun. I gotta try that. She embraced the joy she knew she would feel if she could actually do it. And when she heard the song from her mind movie, her energy rose. So during the first few days when she was tightening her core muscles and drawing energy up her spine with the breathing technique, she felt her sciatic nerve pulsating. It was as if a warm electric current was traveling up the nerve. At the same time, she had the intention that the energy was a healing light ascending her spinal cord. So it was going up, it was ascending her spinal cord. I'm gonna stop right here. This is such a powerful thing. One of the side benefits of doing the breath is that it will strengthen your core muscles because now you are using the muscles at the base of your perineum and you're using them in reverse. Instead of using it to expel excrement, ex expel urine, you know, the muscles that you use during sexual intercourse, when you're having a bowel movement, you're using them in the reverse. You're using it to pull up the cerebrospinal fluid that is in your spinal column and you're bringing it up with your breath as you bring the attention all the way up. And so as you're, you're actually, it's like, it's almost like you're wringing a towel that it's going, it's like a gripping upward motion that goes like this all the way up till it reaches your pineal gland. Then you hold it and then you exhale. And as you exhale, then of course, the cerebral spinal fluid then travels down to the bottom of your spine. And a true story here I want to share with you. A few years back, and this is so powerful because when you meditate, of course, like we do coherence healings, right? So, and you can do a coherence healing too. You can organize a group of eight of your friends to come together and you can decide, hey, you know, I'm going to practice some of these meditations. You, know, you don't have to be an advanced student to do that. You can go now to Dr. Joe's website. I would recommend the first meditation to start with would be breaking the habit of being yourself because you get two meditations. That's three hours of meditations that you get. You get two meditations. One's like an hour and 19 minutes long and the other one's like an hour and 23, I think, minutes long. So you get two meditations and then you guys could all get on Zoom and you could play the meditation and you could do that. and let's say one of you needs healing of the eight let's say there's nine of you so you pick the healy and then you guys the eight are the healer because that's how we do it in the monastery there's eight of us and then there's a designated person who's going to receive the healing and then as you come together and you do that meditation you're just following the guidance that dr joe gives in the meditation along with the music 
and then you direct the intention of love and you picture that person who is the Healy as being healthy, happy, joyous, energized, athletic, running, jumping, rejoicing, celebrating. And then when it's done, you let go. You don't know when it's going to happen. It may happen while you're doing that coherence healing, which is oftentimes the case. Oftentimes it's, it's, it happens while you're doing the healing. You don't touch the person. There's no need to be hands on. You just hold your hands as you meditate like this. And uh, just today, one of my friends, Faust, we, he did an emergency call to us because his son was having, not his son, I'm sorry, his brother was having a very serious um, neurological attack and it was something that, you know, his mother normally has to run to the hospital with him, but under the current condition with the whole pandemic going on and them being in New York, which is chaotic at best right now, um, his mother was adamantly opposed to taking him to the hospital, but she's like, ah, what do I do? Because I can't take him to the hospital because then we'll both get infected with the obvious COVID outbreak that is currently underway over there. And so she didn't want to risk him. Um, she would, they told her that she couldn't go with him, that she would actually have to send him by himself. So she's like, well, that's definitely not going to happen because she's like, she knew that, that that was a recipe for disaster. So she reached out to my friend Faust. And so immediately he put out a, a mercy call or a please call. It's like, hey, you know, let's do a meditation just for my brother. Um, you know, and he told us the gravity of what was going on and how serious, you know, everything was going on. So I am excited to be able to tell you guys. I wonder if I could show you on my phone because it was so exciting because we did the meditation and normally it takes weeks and weeks and weeks for him to recover from something like this but not this time we came together we did the coherent healing on him and within 24 hours he was much better and here he is okay i don't know if you can see there's my it's hard to read but i'm going to read it to you really quickly he says i'm so amazed by you guys tom william every uh, everyone cassia I just wanted to add a few things. I think you can apply. My brother is, let me see if you can see there. It says, his Katie, one of our friends, she lives in Connecticut, or actually Boston, too. Okay, so my brother is much better. Back to his full health. His recovery 24 hours later after our session was amazing. It's rare he ever recovers like that without needing a blood transfusion. I think we did the job for him. My mother was so grateful. She kept texting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So I relay that thanks to everyone in this group who joined us in our session and who kept him in their thoughts. And then uh, prayer hands. Uh, Lynn's idea is pretty awesome. If you would like, I can see. Da, da, da. Okay, so, so that's letting you know. This works if you work it. All you guys have to do is do it. And I really want to encourage you. If any of you are interested in joining me in a blessing of the energy centers or breaking the habit of being you meditation, water rising or body parts meditation, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do a couple of those and we'll see. I'm doing quite a few of them within the group of um, our mystics for people that we identify that need healing in some way, shape or form. But I would, I'd be open to um, doing that with you all if you're interested. So just put in the comments below, let me know. And if you want to reach out to a few other friends who you think might want to join a meditation like that, I would be more than happy to, to, to um, lead that. Okay, so on the third day, she started her morning by searching the internet until she found an image of a woman doing aerial yoga. She carried that image in her mind all day. That afternoon, our students were working with the kaleidoscope and their mind movies. And after they unfolded into the quantum field, I, I then asked them to dimensionalize a scene from their mind move when the meditation was finished. I instructed them to lie down on the floor, but as Sarah told me later, she couldn't find the floor. She kept reaching lower and lower, searching for it, but it no longer, it was no longer there. The next thing she knew, she was in a different dimension, having a full-on IMAC-like sensory experience. 
but without her senses, she was living a future scene of her mind movie. Enough circuits in her brain had turned on to make her internal experience as real as any external experience she had ever had. She was not visualizing this scene. She was in it, living it. I realized I was in another reality, a different time and space. I was in my future, she explained, and I was actually performing aerial yoga. I was hanging upside down and the floor wasn't there. I kept reaching for it, but I was just swinging upside down from this beautiful red silk scarf. I felt freedom from my pain. I was swinging freely in space. Eventually she did lie down with tears of joy flowing down her cheeks. When she came out of that meditation, all of her pain was gone. I knew I was healed, she said. I was in awe of the power of my mind, and I felt tremendous gratitude. The ultimate state of receivership. I'll repeat that. The ultimate state of receivership is gratitude and appreciation. I continue to manifest things from my mind movie. In fact, my mind movie can't even keep up with my life. Imagine that. Imagine living a life where you put your dreams, you put your wants, you put your heart's desires in a simple little mind movie, and then you start manifesting them like this. And before you start manifesting them, you're already in gratitude and appreciation and broadcasting out love that just magnetizes it and makes it happen faster. And oh my gosh, you can't seem to create the mind movies fast enough and, and move on to new ones because you're, you're a manifesting machine. You're a manifesting machine already, except you're a manifesting machine right now in default, creating the things that you don't want. Now you're going to be aware and you're gonna be mindful and you are going to be doing it with an elevated emotion of love and joy and appreciation and gratitude to manifest with intention that which you actually do want so you don't get what everybody else gets, which is what they don't want. Next section is Terry walks into a new future. So in September 2016, while practicing her walking meditation along Australia's beautiful sunshine coast, Terry had a profound experience. So toward the end of her meditation, when she stopped for a final part, she was feeling connected, uplifted, and expansive. As she followed my instructions, she opened herself up to the feel with the intention of being worthy, worthy of her future life. With no warning, she felt an electric charge enter her body through her crown of her head where it continued to flow down into her heart. I've never felt that before. I would love to feel that. As the energy coursed through the rest of her body, surging through her thighs and down into her feet, her legs began shaking uncontrollably. The only way I can describe it is that there was an intense shaking from the inside, she told me, but it was a voltage of energy that my body had never experienced. I thought I was going to fall over. It was at that point I lost all conscious control over my lower body. She burst into uncontrollable tears, and with that release, her mind and body also began to let go. Time appeared to stand still. Terry understood that her body was surrendering a lifetime of past, unresolved emotions. As the surge of electricity continued to move through her, she felt huge amounts of dense, dark matter falling away from her body. I believed this matter was trauma, not only from my lifetime, but also past lifetimes, she remembered. It included the trauma of my father nearly dying from a suicide attempt when I was eight, which has cast a shadow over my life by preventing me from allowing myself to receive unconditional love. She felt all her limiting beliefs, many of which she had acquired through deep emotional conditioning and the unconscious beliefs of others, simply dissolved. Everything that was not in alignment with who I really am just fell away, Terry said. I experienced true liberation, something my soul has been yearning for for a very long time. I knew in a moment that my soul had guided me to that very beach at that very moment with all 
these people to do this important work. She fell to her knees, an overwhelming amount of love flowing through her, kneeling in the sand, humbled by this power. She saw that every choice she had made up until that point was necessary for her to arrive at that poignant moment. In that instant, she observed who she had been for the last year, consistently choosing to do meditations every day, all the while falling in love with herself. She knew that her future self in that moment was calling her past self to have this experience of profound love. So when Terry came back to the three-dimensional reality of her senses, she felt an overwhelming sense of peace and oneness from everything around her. And she reported a deep reconnection to her physical, mental, emotional, spiritual self. And she, she said she felt more like herself than she had in a very long time. I'm gonna put a pause right here because this is so characteristic of so many people I've talked to. I just talked to a gal in Hawaii who was telling me how for the first time in years, thank goodness, she feels connected to herself again. She feels like her, like her real self. And it's thank God to this pandemic, to this global reset that we're having, where everyone's on lockdown, because Hawaii is in lockdown too. And because of that, you know, she's still working, but her hours are drastically reduced. She only has to work a few hours a day. So she has a lot more time to rest, recuperate, meditate. She's recovering from a surgery herself. And this meditation has given her that sense of feeling like she's herself again and falling back in love with the true her that she actually is. And I got to speak to also what, what this particular person, Terry, was talking about, the uncontrollable shaking, because that happened to me recently. My March 22nd mystical experience that I had that I recorded a video immediately. I had just come out of um, five hours of meditation with my fellow mystics, and I had this profound, just amazing interdimensional mystical experience where my body was shaking uncontrollably and I had these little beings that were very childlike where they were kind of what they were doing and they were all talking at the same time but I'll link I'll put the link at the end of this video so that you can check that out afterwards but you don't have any control first of all you're not in this 3d plane in the meditation at some point somehow you take off and you go into a different realm and the next thing you know, yeah, the next thing that you know, you find yourself, you don't know how you got there. You're just, you, you're in a deep place of knowing you know that you're in a different place, but you don't know where you are. And then I happen to be informed of being in the sixth you know, dimension and then the seventh and then the eighth. And I didn't know that I was going to be progressing from dimension to dimension. And, everything that was revealed there. But I remember very distinctly the violent shaking because they kept on pulling me to the left. And I could not stop that if I wanted to. It was just it kept on going and going and going and you know they kept on shaking. And so the same thing happened to Terry and the same thing may happen to you. And if you begin to shake, if you begin to feel any kind of, like she felt an electrical surge that came in through her crown and then went down. I felt an electrical surge throughout my whole body, but I didn't feel that it entered through my crown. It just began, I think, more from like my heart space. And then it was just, it was all simultaneously all over, kind of in a three-dimensional kind of a spherical way, if that makes any sense. So anyhow, I just want to let you know that everybody's experience is different. Just like your thumbprint, everybody, even twins, don't share the same thumbprints. We all have a different energetic experience and these meditations you're going to feel what will be divinely and unique just to you and it'll be exactly what you need make no mistakes it will be exactly what you need you may have some discomfort it may feel unusual you may even have some pain but just know that whatever pain you're, you're feeling it's just in the moment and it's going to the energy is going to move and it's going to adjust whatever is required to provide you with a biological upgrade. And then watch out because you've got some exciting things that will happen after that that you don't know 
what it means, but it's revealed with time. So when Terry came back to the three-dimensional reality of her senses, she felt an overwhelming sense of peace and oneness with everything around her. She reported a deep reconnection to her physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual self, and said she felt more like herself than she had in a very long time. This experience reminded me that I am as we all are. And so the message is very clear, very plain and simple to you. I am worth, I'm worthy of receiving it. I am worthy, repeat after me, I am worthy of receiving it. You are worthy of receiving it. So give yourself permission to receive this beautiful, divine gift that's your birthright, that you came, before you came to earth, this was for you, it was yours. And now you can remember, the member of your body will bring it back to embody that again, so that you are whole, so that you feel love, peace, joy, freedom, gratitude, appreciation, and it won't matter what Crazy Jane is doing. It won't matter. It won't matter what kind of government system you, you live in. It won't matter. All the exterior conditions won't rock the peace that you have inside you. You will be unstoppable, unshakable, unbreakable, you will be resilient, you'll kind of be like water. Water is so powerful that it can destroy, I mean, think of the tsunamis. And yet it is so soft that it pretty much can take the shape of anything. It doesn't matter how tiny the space or how big the space, water can fill it all. You can take a jar, just picture a big glass jar right here. And I can put large rocks in there, and then I can put medium rocks in there, and then I can put tiny rocks in there, and then I can fill the rest with sand. And just when I thought it was filled with sand, guess what? I can pour water, and the water will acquiesce and mold exactly to all the crevices and will fill that jar. It will complete that jar and the jar will officially be full once I top it off with water. And you will have the resilience of water. Like water, make no mistakes, crystals and water can be programmed. One of the things, I haven't shared this with my other fellow mystics, but I probably should, but you'll probably notice, uh, it's kind of, so for example, like I have, this is a heart and it says love. It has a number eight, which means something to me. And one of the things that I do is when I meditate, I hold in my left hand, I forget that I'm even holding in my left hand the water because you get so deep into in the meditation, but I'm programming the water. My body, you know, babies are like 85% water. Adults are 70 to 75% water, give or take, depending on age, depending on hydration and so forth. Water can be programmed. Tons of evidence. You can look at um, Imaru, Dr. Um, <laughs> Imarasu, I'm kind of messing up his name, but uh, he has this incredible body of work that talks about how, how you can speak a word on water and the crystals that will be formed will have beautiful geometric formations if you spe speak words of hate, of anger, if you, if you Images, just the same, have the same power of programming the water. So back to programming yourself. Just like water can be programmed, you can be programmed. And if you want to up the game in your meditations and hold, I keep, this is my meditation water bottle because I program the water with the intentions that I want. One of them being love, the other one is being the wisdom. This is the symbol of the King of Solomon. So I want the wisdom of King Solomon and so on and so forth. And so then you drink that water that has been programmed with love, it has been programmed with wisdom, it has been programmed with all those good positive vibrations that come from an open heart. 
and it just magnifies and it accelerates the rate at which you are going to manifest healing for others, healing for yourself, healing for others, abundance and prosperity in all, it, all of its forms. So it's one of my little secrets I'm going to share with you. So that's it. This is the conclusion of chapter 10. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want me to do an Ask Me Anything question uh, session, I would be more than delighted to do that. Depending on how many people ask me for that in the questions and comments below, we will schedule that. Thank you for tuning in, tapping in, and turning on to Love and Money Secrets TV. I'm your host, Dean William Walker, from my heart to yours. I'm sending you love. Oh, by the way, let me know if you have been affected by Go Love 20. It's either a yes or a no. And if you're like, uh, what's Go Love 20? Then the answer is no. Now let me know because we can take care of that for you and make sure you get affected with Go Love 20. Surprise. All right. Ciao. Ciao for now. <laughs>